Tonight we delve into the seedy world of TRS Radio. We will uncover the disturbing facts regarding one of its most well-known and enigmatic figures, all in the hopes of answering the one question burning in the minds of his listeners. Mike Enoch. Oh, God. Jew? <laughs> Certainly, there are those flagrant circumstantial facts that seem to point to the affirmative. For example, his very name throws doubt onto the existence of his foreskin. <laughs> Enoch, itself Jewy, is an anagram for Cohen. <laughs> Others point to recent public comments he has made, such as there can be reconciliation with Soros and with NRO. And making America white again is a pipe dream. And Murray's has better bagels than Katz's Deli, and cheaper too. <laughs> but to really understand this man, we need to look into his past, into the events that shaped his life. We start from the beginning. Mike Enoch was born into a middle-class family in Long Island. Though he grew up in a mostly white neighborhood, he did attend rather diverse and multicultural public schools. It was in elementary school that Mike befriended a black classmate named Jamal. These two precocious students, while in the halcyon Duran Duran days of their youth, came to grips with their respective racial identities. A poignant example of this was when the two boys went shopping for the latest Transformer action figure at Toys R Us. Jamal was quick to shoplift his. Mike spent an hour and a half negotiating the price down. As Mike grew older, he developed an interest in public service. In junior high, Mike made his first foray into politics with a run for student council president. To this day, many of his former classmates still remember the scandal that erupted when school administrators discovered that Enoch and his friend Chad were standing near the ballot box handing out 40s and weed to all the black students who wanted to vote. Becoming more introspective with age, Mike began asking existential questions. While seeking answers, he ran across noted Russian-born Jewish author Ayn Rand, which led to his early infatuation with the pseudo-philosophy of objectivism. Soon realizing that not every math question could be answered with A equals A, <laughs> Mike decided to channel the mental discipline that his independent epistemological studies had given him into the <laughs> high school debate team. According to his debate team coach, Mike had a very aggressive debate style which helped lead his team to a state championship against Mother Agnes's School for the Blind. The coach recalled the sophistry that Mike used to decisively rebut an argument during that very debate. In countering his opponent's view that axiomatic concepts are in themselves a contradiction to the Socratic method, Mike responded with the winning rebuttal, you stupid motherfucker, get over here and clean your mama's pussy stank off my dick, you goddamn half a f Shortly after graduating high school, Mike was accepted to New York University. There, he became intrigued with the Austrian School of Economics. But his pursuits went beyond the mere intellectual. These were also avant-garde experimental days for him. Being a dance major, Mike used his new passion for Austrian economics to choreograph and perform an interpretive dance of the book Human Action by Ludwig von Mises. This was set to the musical score of Styx's iconic Come Sail Away. All unfortunately, while he wore only a diminutive leotard with leg warmers. It was here at NYU that Mike first came into contact with a medium that would define such a significant part of his life. His first foray into radio was as a DJ with the university radio station, where he coined the iconic phrases, so here's the thing and boom goes the dynamite. Feeling restricted by the university radio station guidelines, 
he expanded his reach into the exciting world of underground radio. He joined a radio station playing such artists as Screwdriver, Deathhead, and Zamfir, Master of the Pan Flute. It was there he gained a large following as DJ Flicker. He later transitioned his popular radio persona into the all-white hip-hop group called Mikey Mike and the Fashy Bunch. His albums were popular among suburban youth with many memorable tracks such as About Time I Funk You and Make Me Say Oosh. The Fashy Bunch reached its musical zenith with their multi-platinum Good Racials, winning an MTV Music Award for Best New Album. Soon tiring of the constant touring and the superficial pleasures of groupies and all-night partying, Mike yearned for a deeper meaning, something more substantial from life. After trying a brief stint as a Scientologist where he metered celebrities and helped chase evil thetans away from John Travolta's hairline, he was seduced by the sexy world of anarcho-capitalism. Reading the dust jackets of several important books by prominent Jewish author Murray Rothbard, Mike, along with many other ANCAP enthusiasts, started an anti-status commune to escape the unbearable tyranny of publicly funded roads. Unfortunately, within two days, the Jews in the community had cornered the market on their fledgling free market currency, and the group was forced to disband. Now feeling lost in the world, Mike Enoch found new hope in a charismatic young political figure running for president, Barack Obama. Mike, very much disenchanted with the Bush neocon pro-war agenda, wanted to see the country take a new direction. He felt so strongly that he volunteered at one of the Obama campaign's local offices. It was while manning the phone banks that Mike first encountered overt, virulent racism. And he liked it. It was one such conversation with a self-employed drywall contractor named Sven that changed his life forever. When Mike asked which candidate he was supporting for president, the potential voter Sven replied, the one that's not a n <laughs> Despite every subsequent question Mike posed regarding policy, political appointees, or party affiliation, there was not one answer from Sven that didn't include a racial epithet. The singleness of purpose, the clarity of conviction that he expressed, it was like an epiphany for Mike. Suddenly, the world made sense. The two became fast friends, and within weeks, the right stuff dot biz was born. The rest, as they say, is history. So after reviewing the facts of this man's life, once more the question is posed, is Mike Enoch a Jew? I don't know. Probably.